Canucks aren't going to be able to put a, put a package together to take Leo Carlson from the Columbus Blue Jackets. Am I am I right about that? Can that conversation basically start and end right there? Yeah, they don't have the pieces for that, unfortunately. Um, even if you were to like look at their top prospects that you could use in a trade, it's like Huglander's not going to get it done. Pug Colton's not going to get it done. You're not getting up from 11 without a without probably another first round pick at least, and then a prospect probably to go from 11 to two because there's a huge difference between the top four guys and the the rest that you're going to see between the five and 11 range. So yeah, I don't think that's happening anytime soon. What's going on here, Alex? Okay. How many viewers we got? <laughs> Point, no, Alex is doing double duty. I can't be ripping on him. Yeah, no All kidding. Right. Okay, oh, so let me get trading, to the results. Down. Yeah, get to the results here real quick. Uh, you can pull it up. Alex voted for no, drafted 11. Uh, the majority of voters agree with Alex, myself included. I, I think they're going to trade 11th, Chris, because partly this is because we do this song and dance every year where we talk, oh, are they going to move? Are they going to move? And then they never do. So no, I yeah. think they will draft at 11. Uh, the other options, 23% say yes, they will trade it for a player. I think that's the most likely if they move the pick. I think it's most likely for a player. 19% say yes, they will move up. 12% say no, yes, they will move the pick, but they will move down in the draft order. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they're going to draft at 11th. Part of me also thinks that, yeah, they might trade it for a player. Like, I, I don't think that's completely out of the realm of possibility, Chris. I really don't. Some uh, people in the chat here, Vince and Jesse, JT in 11th for the second or third overall pick. I don't, no. I don't, I don't buy this, uh, the reports of JT Miller being offered two first round picks. I don't think I can't, I can't see it back in the, you know, this was uh, reported a few, a little while ago by Frank, I believe. But, uh, what do you mean you don't round... buy it? I don't think, like, you don't, I don't think, think, think the Canucks that... were asking for two first round picks. No, I don't think the Canucks were offered two first round picks. Cause that's not geez, what the report be... was. What was the report? That they look, they were looking for two first round picks and a prospect. Oh, okay. Then I'm off then. I don't, I don't think it was reported that they turned down two first round picks. The report, I believe also from Friedman, was that they turned down multiple picks. It wasn't multiple first round picks. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And I was going to say, even, I'd say no matter the case here, that's a lot. Yeah, okay. I'm reading it now. Frank's the never coming on the show again. Oh, I know. Well, you're, he's not listening. So we're okay. Uh, all right. I, I think, I think the most likely trading scenario, I do agree with the people. I, I, I think they're going to, pick at 11 but i do think that the most likely trade scenario is for a player um so i don't want to get to the rankings first why don't we get this up the rfas um alex if we can get this graphic up here i think this might be the route where they end up going with an rfa potentially being the player and these are some of the top ones that i'm looking at and i don't think it's straight across 11 for any of these guys i do think you balance this out with prospects or draft picks but pierre luc dubois he's an rfa He's going to need a new contract. He obviously, I think from everybody kind of reading the situation, he doesn't want to be back in Winnipeg again next season. He's 24 years old, coming off a 27-goal season. Hell of a third-line center if the Canucks are looking to add him that way. Vince Dunn, I don't think he's a real option. I think that he's he's going to be back with Seattle. They really like him, and he had a great offensive season. Uh, Bowen Byram, coming off an ELC. Don't know what his future is. I wonder if, uh, you know, I think Colorado would like to keep him, but I wonder if there's something else that you can look for with Byram to get him a new start, get him in uh, Vancouver. I know there's the, the concussion worries moving forward for sure, but there's a hell of a player there uh, when Byram is healthy. So we'll have to see. Christian Fisher had a big year uh, with the Coyotes. Uh, and I'm not saying this is the guy you want to give your 11th overall pick for, but 26 years old, plays center, could be an option for a later round pick maybe. Uh, and then Gabe Velarde, how about a breakout season for him, man? At 23 years old, he scored 23 goals this year. Uh, and they have a lot of depth in the, in the Kings system there to kind of play in that 3C, 4C role. So you wonder if Velarde might be one that you can kind of shake loose. And the, Velarde's more of a player that you, you like the opposing team is targeting, right? They're not trying to trade Velarde, but they're thinking, hey, if we can get a big haul back for a player that's being targeted, it's probably Gabe Velarde from this, that Kings team, right? So it's an interesting one to watch there. He's coming off a one-year um, $825,000 contract as well. So he's a center option, really would be a very good third-line center for the Canucks moving forward. He's young, like we said, 23 years old. It'll be interesting to see uh, to see what happens with uh, with this player here. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, 
I don't think they move that pick at the end of the day, but if they do, probably mm-hmm. going to be for one of those young players. Like, we saw them get Hronik, and look, like, we haven't seen a full season of Philip Hronik, but he's a good defenseman. He's the second best defenseman on this team immediately. Yeah, they gave up a first and a second for it, and it could have been a lot worse given the yep. trade protection on, or I should say lack of, on that pick that they ended up moving. Look, they like Ronick. Let's see how he does next year. I'm not saying I love That's the scary. move or anything like that, but they're, they're looking for playoffs and Ronick gets them closer. And if you think the cap is scary for the Canucks right now, the Canucks have two of the top four RFAs Like when it comes to what they're making on their current contracts. Ronick and Pedersen are two of the top four RFAs next summer. So you're going to, they're going to be looking for big raises, both of them. So the cap is going to need to be handled a lot this, as much as it's going to be a struggle this summer, you need to also prepare for when that extra money is coming on with Pedersen and Hironic. And yeah, you hope that there's going to be some, some rise in the salary cap in general. So hopefully that gives you some space as well, but you got two of the top four RFAs who are making current money on their contracts right now, both going to be looking for big raises. Uh, and I think that's something you have to worry about for next season, but you know what? I don't want to worry about that. That's too far in the future. Let's uh, on... go ahead. On that note, people in the chat also brought up the idea of an offer sheet. Could the Canucks offer sheet someone? Offer Ooh. sheets often end with retaliation from another GM. We saw the whole thing uh, with Sebastian Ajo in Carolina and then followed by Jesperi Kotkaniemi the following summer. Teams don't forget that kind of thing. You saw the, out- yep. the statement that was put out by Don Woodell, Carolina Hurricanes general manager, when they offer sheeted Jesperi Kotkaniemi, used almost verbatim the statement that the Habs put out uh, from Mark Bergevin, who was the GM at that time, I believe, who offer sheeted Sebastian Ajo. Teams don't like that. Teams don't like that. And if the Canucks want to put a huge target on their back, the summer before they go into negotiations with Philip Ronick and Elias Pettersson, then yeah, they could do an offer sheet, but they won't because they're not going to want to put a target on their back uh, right before that mm-hmm. summer. So no, an offer sheet will not happen uh, this summer. Also, it's Jim Rutherford. Uh, that, that ain't happening. Oh, no, no. Here's a question. I like this in the chat here because I, I think it's worth discussing. Would you trade the 11th overall pick for Bowen Byram? Because it's a stack draft. You're getting a very good player, but man, when and that's the risk, right? Because when Bowen Byram's on, you're talk- if you're talking about a second pair of a healthy, motivated Bowen Byram and Philip Ronick, and you got Quinn Hughes and literally insert just a live body with a right-handed stick, you're talking about a top four that is starting to look pretty damn good in the NHL if, if they live up to potential. The question is, are they going to live up to potential? Because, man, that's a great second pairing. If you have a healthy Bowen Byram, and I think that's just the question with him, is he going to be healthy next season? OEL Myers, your third pair still? Yeah, well, I, <laughs> yeah. What are you going to say? <laughs> you know? That is one of the defense groups of the NHL. The Canucks have arguably one of the best defense cores in the, in the league with a $13 million third pair that uh, can't skate or defend, but that's what they got. <laughs>